Amen. And that is so true. So very true. Um, I want us to think for a few moments today about that road that Jesus went down to Jerusalem. You know that he said many times uh, throughout his ministry that his time had not come yet. And then the Bible said he turned his face towards Jerusalem. And we know then he understood the time was near and the time that he would uh, go to the cross for us uh, was about to be. And I want us to think about that today and look at several verses in Matthew 20, 17 through 28. And we will try to go down that road with him to Jerusalem today and see some things that I think he would want us to know. Now, Jesus going up to, to Jerusalem took the 12 disciples aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. Jesus was trying to let them know what was about to happen, but they didn't want to hear it uh, as usual. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons, which would have been uh, James and John, uh, came to him with her sons kneeling down and asking him something from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and the other on the left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you do not know what you ask. You, are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, we are able. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my father. And when the 10 heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers, probably because they didn't think about asking first. But Jesus called them to himself and said, you know, that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant or your master. And whoever uh, desires to be first among you, let him be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many or in place of many. Uh, and there goes the siren. Time to pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for loving us and we have no idea what the siren is for, but we know that it signifies some emergency and we pray, Father, for whoever's involved for safety and we pray, Lord, that in the midst of all that, your name will be glorified and magnified. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. So everybody wants to be somebody, amen? Nobody wants to be left out. Uh, James and John, although uh, second and third most closest to Jesus, didn't think that was enough. Uh, they wanted more. Uh, they and their mom had probably uh, thought together, we've earned it. We've done all these things, and now it's time that we get elevated to the position uh, that, we, that we deserve. Uh, Jesus had just gotten through talking to them about uh, who would be the greatest and who wouldn't be the greatest, about servanthood and about doing the things that should be done, about the things that he had already shown them uh, about servanthood, and yet all they could think about was elevating uh, themselves to a different uh, position. So as they were going down that road to Jerusalem, they didn't understand what it meant uh, to be a, a child of God, a, a, a Christian, a follower of Jesus, a servant of Jesus. Uh, but they wanted a throne and a crown while Jesus was going to be humiliated and suffer and end up with a cross. Uh, they want to follow Jesus, but they wouldn't want to go where he was going, wouldn't want to do what he was doing. Uh, 
I want you to let's think about that today, about going down that road to Jerusalem. And I want us to think about three things that uh, I think have to do with this passage and have to do with him going down the road to Jerusalem and us also being that. First thing is this, everybody wants to be in charge. Amen? Everybody wants to be somebody. Uh, we want to be head of the class. We want to be first. And I've mentioned it many, many times before. When we used to play ball, whether it was football, basketball, baseball, uh, that's about all we played. Now, now we got all these other kind of, kind of balls. That's about all that we played. You always wanted to be chose first. You know, you didn't want to be chosen last. You wanted to be chose first. You felt like you were the best if you were chose first. We want to be important. Uh, we want to be looked up to. Uh, in many ways, we've become power hungry uh, as the years have gone by. A man named Millard Fuller was a high-powered lawyer in Montgomery, Alabama, made millions of dollars uh, before he was 30. Uh, he was on his way to be one of the wealthy, wealthiest and most influential in the South. But then he thought about things. He was unhappy. Uh, his family was coming apart and his children seemed to him almost like strangers. Uh, so he exchanged his desire to be somebody, which is the world's desire, to being somebody uh, in the eyes of God. He started Habitat for Humanity, which is still going on, built homes for the homeless all over the world. Uh, if we are going to follow Jesus down that road to Jerusalem, we must look to be a different somebody than the world looks at. Looks like, at. Amen? Amen. Uh, we can be somebody in the world's eyes, but that is not going to allow us to make sure we're somebody in God's eyes. Millard Fuller realized what God meant in 1 John 2, 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It takes a different kind of somebody to follow Jesus and to follow him in the footsteps that he had here on earth. Sometimes we don't feel like we deserve more, and other times we feel like we deserve a lot more. Uh, sometimes we feel like we ought to be in charge. Sometimes we feel like we ought to be on top and not on the bottom. Uh, and many times we want to be recognized when we're not recognized and especially when other people are recognized that we feel like we should be recognized even more. Jesus spoke to that in Luke 12, 16 through 21. Then Jesus spoke a par parable to them saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, that's when we go wrong, when we think within ourselves. Because when we think within ourselves, we're thinking only about ourselves. He said this, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? Think about all the times he's talking about I and me and mine. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my good crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night, your life will be required of you. Then whose will these things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. You know, I have found in my lifetime, and we say it a lot of times that we can't outgive God. And what it means is if we are faithful to do the things that God asks us to do, then he's going to always provide for us. Uh, and that can be uh, uh, monetary things. Yes, it can be. It may not always be, but it can be. Uh, but it will always be blessings back to us uh, in peace, in assurance, in uh, uh, comfort, in all the different things that God 
uh, promises uh, to us. Uh, in the end, it is God who is in charge. Amen? I have people sometimes that act like they're in charge. I have people sometimes that act like everything has to revolve around them and their world. But in the end, it's going to be God that's in charge. Here's Jesus' point, a second thing. If you want to be great, you must be a servant. Uh, that is the basis of the kingdom of God. Jesus said this in Matthew 20, 27, whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave or your servant. Uh, this is something quite different from what James, John, and their mom was talking about. They wanted to sit right there uh, in glory, one on each side of Jesus, and uh, so to speak, be in charge. Uh, and many times, if not most of the time, it comes out to us that this is what we really want. Now, we may not say it, we may not act like it, or we might act like it, but many times in our minds, those thoughts come to us that we're not getting what we really deserve and we deserve more. And somebody over here got something that I should have got. Somebody over here got a place of prominence that I should have got. Somebody over here got some kind of elevated position that I should have got. Somebody got this raise or this promotion that I should have got. But we have to remember that if we continue to be faithful to God, then he's gonna give us everything that we need to be who he wants us to be instead of who the world says we should be. Uh, because of that, we need guidance and Jesus gives it to us. Uh, Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for us. And I try to live by that every day I believe that's something that we all ought to try and live by. I'd, I'd fall short of it for sure, but I try to live that way every day. Uh, we need to hear that every day in our lives. Amen? That we're servants, that we are free from the penalty of sin, but we're free to be slaves, to be servants of God. Uh, now, I want us to look at the harder part of uh, going down that road towards Jerusalem. Uh, and I ask it this way, are you, am I able to drink that cup? Uh, Matthew 26, 39, we find these words about Jesus. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, his cup and our cup are somewhat different. The cup that he had to uh, endure was all the sin of the world piled upon him when he was sinless. Our cup is the tribulations that we go through in life because we follow him and because we're faithful to him. Uh, similar, but not nearly about the same. His cup was accepting the divine wrath of God because of us, because of our sin. Uh, the only thing that we need to keep focused on in our lives, I think, is love. If we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, uh, and we love our neighbors as ourselves, then everything else is gonna fall in place, amen? If we kept that, we wouldn't need any other laws, any other rules, any other commands. If we truly love God with all of our being, and we loved our neighbors as ourselves, I believe everything else would just fall into place. Jesus promised us in this life, you will have tribulation. Uh, 
That's the garbage of things that come upon us in life. Uh, you can think back if you want to on things that, that's come upon you. Uh, and, and really, some of the things that come upon us, we bring on ourselves. Do we not? We bring on ourselves. A lot of things we don't bring on ourselves, other people bring on us. And I'll tell you the truth, I've brought a lot of these things on other people too uh, in my life. And I'm guilty of that too. So in this life, we will have tribulation, but Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome uh, the world. Uh, while we're here, and I wonder sometimes why God leaves us here, but I, I know without a doubt, as long as he leaves us here, he has something for us to do. Uh, as long as we're here, we have something to do. And the main thing we have to do is proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We have to be his witnesses. Uh, but it also means while we're here that we have to continue to drink this cup uh, of tribulation that's poured out upon us. Uh, and to me, that is the things that we suffer because of Christ's sake. And that's what the Bible says. In other words, uh, I can do foolish, foolish things and say that that's my cup that I have to endure, but really it's just the things that come to me because I was foolish and didn't act right. But when I stand for Christ and I have to endure the things that come, then that is the cup that I have to drink while I'm still here. Uh, I don't know if you have felt like you've been down that road to Jerusalem lately. Uh, that road ended with a cross for Christ, uh, but it also en ended with an empty tomb. Amen? And so I praise God that he did that for us so that we have that assurance of eternal life and we even though we have to endure these things, the Bible says it's only for a moment. It's only for a short period of time when you figure it in, into eternity that we go through these tribulations, these troubles, these hurts, these pains, these sorrows. And, and all of us have been through them. All of us have been through them with family. We've been through them with friends. We've seen them as a country and so forth. So we, uh, we know that they're there uh, and we have to endure them. Any questions or comments? Anything? Yes, sir. The, uh, soon after, uh, James and Peter found out that they had to drink that cup because Herod killed James and uh -huh. Peter, so it, it, didn't, it started pretty soon after. Yes, sir. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And we see those same kind of things today. You know? I... I I say, Brother Larry, that the more, the more the people of this world system of evil, the more they see they can do, the more they're going to do. And I think that goes kind of along with what you're saying. Testing the waters. That's right, testing the waters. And the less that we stand for it, the more they're going to do it. Little by little. Little by little. True. Anything else? Yeah. Well, the grandkids. The grandkids are, you know, I've had people uh, to tell me uh, about their kids or their grandkids and go on and on. And I say, you know something? I'm so glad we weren't that way when we were their age, aren't you? And they stop me and they say, you know, we were, weren't we? I say, yeah, we were, we were. And finally we wised up. Hopefully they'll wise up sooner than we did, or some of us did, than I did. Uh, I was about 26 or 27 years old before I really wised up. <laughs> but but uh, uh, it, it takes a while sometimes. Anything else? Brother Stephen, anything? Okay. 
Father, we love you and we thank you so much for loving us. And we thank you for your love and your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness. We thank you, Father, that although we know we're servants, Lord, we are your children. So we're children of the King, and we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, that we're really on top of the world, although we are seen to be on the bottom. We know, Father, that that trip to Jerusalem was very costly for Jesus. We know that he knew what was about to happen. And although those that were with him wouldn't face it, we know that it was coming. And we pray, Father, that you continue to be with each of us that we might know without a doubt that we belong to you. And we pray that you bless us, keep us, cause our faces to shine, call your face to shine upon us and give us your peace that surpasses all of our human understanding. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen and amen.